Uh, speaking of celebrity, Jules, you talk about Christine Jurgensen um, in the in uh, framing Agnes, and talk a little bit about for maybe you know there are probably a lot of people who don't know who Christine Jurgensen is. Tell explain who she was, and you know kind of how she fits into the the story. Can I interrupt before and just say Jules's treatment of Christine Jorgensen in the film is in and of itself iconic. I feel like we could just look at that little thing on a loop and it's anyway, so. Well, right thank back. you, Chase. I mean, I have to admit, it's one of my favorite parts of seeing me on screen. You know, and for those who haven't seen the film yet, it's um, sort of this, and actually this is a great answer to your question. There's sort of, a, you know, Christine Jorgensen, she's sort of the household name, you know, amongst trans people. And she's someone who's been known really since the 1950s when she burst onto the scene. But for a lot of folks, you know, this is your first time meeting her. And so in the film, I, I kind of feel like it's my sort of like a stand up routine moment. I'm doing a little impersonation, doing my best mid century transsexual and doing my best New York accent. Um, but really, Christine Jorgensen was this actually the most famous person in the world in 1952. And uh, you know, not a lot of us would know this unless, you know, we're history buffs were around back then, but, but really the most famous person in the world was a trans woman. And she was so famous because, you know, she had had this kind of almost made for Hollywood story. You know, she had been in World War II as a GI, right? And then after the war, you know, she was sort of bumbling around and, you know, kind of learning about hormones and things like that and ends up traveling to Denmark in order to, um, you know, receive gender confirmation surgery because at the time it was basically impossible to get it in the United States. Very, very, very hard. And so, you know, through some sort of means that are, you know, still up for debate, she really parlayed that into incredible celebrity. And so in the film, you see these incredible, like moving pictures from when she's literally landing in New York City. And there are just a throng of reporters waiting to mob her and be like, what is going on? A man became a woman. And, you know, she was this perfect um, GI before, and now she's a blonde bombshell. And, you know, it's really this incredible kind of meditation on like, on the one hand, we're like, wait, wait, hold on. I thought trans visibility was like, you know, since 2014. No, 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 no. We could go back to the 1950s and see that trans people were all over the news, but then you have to start to ask like, what kind of trans people, right? And this is why I got a little sticky in the film too, is because like Christine is clearly performing, right? She's like, what kind of woman could I be for America and for the world where they might accept me? And even though she's doing a very good job, we're talking about like high class, high feminine white woman, the immense pressure on her, that pressure to be public is at the same time her only option for making a living. And yet it comes with so many risks and limitations. In some ways, she both sets the stage for everyone else that we encounter in the film. And yet almost no one can be like her. And if you ask almost any trans person, especially trans folks who you know have been around for a little while, a lot of them will tell you that they actually truly had to measure themselves against Christine Jorgensen at one point or another in their lives, either literally, because, you know, because of Christine, when you would go to a doctor in the 1960s, if you're a trans woman, you can bet that doctor literally had Christine in his mind while she was sizing you up to see if you deserved access to healthcare, or just because in general, that was who everyone knew. And so she's just this really interesting figure that kind of hangs over the film. And one who I kind of, you know, I think like a lot of other trans women wanted to also pay a little bit of loving homage to and thank her for her service and just her incredible screen presence. Because I mean, who doesn't dream of returning to New York City to a mob of reporters meeting you on the tarmac? It's just so glamorous. <laughs> Idlewild, no, 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. less. <laughs> no less. <laughs>